Here you have the scripture reading. And this is because this is the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And in celebration of that, they want to talk about dreams and dreams. You know, if you don't have a dream, That's right. you don't have hope. That's oh, right. You don't have hope, you have no objectives. Yeah. And if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to know when you get there? That's right. <laughs> right. So it's important that we have dreams. That's right. You know, it was Joseph, one of uh, the youngest of Jacob's sons, who surprised and angered his brothers one day when he told them about two of his dreams. Yes. And Joseph told his brothers, I had a dream in which we were binding sheaves in the field. And when my sheep arose and stood upright, your sheaves bowed to mine. Uh -huh. Well, naturally, his brothers resented uh, the Joseph, first of all, for the audacity uh, of the dream, yeah. and, and second, for his articulation of it to them. <laughs> uh -huh. and they said to him, shall you indeed reign or have dominion over us? <coughs> Before Joseph's brothers could recover from the shock of that first dream, he told them about the second one. <laughs> I had a dream in which the sun, moon, and the eleven stars bowed before me. And this time, Joseph's father reacted and said, Just what are you saying? Shall I, your mother, and your brothers bow before you? He said, According to the scriptures, Joseph's brothers hated him because of his dreams. However, his father paid attention to that. You know, it was a hot. Father, that a wild beast had 
devoured him, and after we've disposed of the dreamer, then we shall see what will become of his dream. There were those in America whose response to King was to attack. And those, there were those who said, let us destroy the dreamer. And we'll destroy him by discrediting him. Uh, we'll discredit him first with his family by spreading all kinds of rumors and gossip about his personal and moral life. We'll send his wife an unclear tape of which she hears his voice supposedly talking about one of his alleged affairs. And then we'll discredit him with the black community by calling him a thief. So we can tell the people that he's stealing their money and turning in fraudulent income tax returns. You know, there are always those who are open to, ready, and willing to receive that kind of gospel. Come then on we'll now. discredit him with white America by calling him a communist. Yes, you know, yes. Most whites don't understand him and don't know how to cope with him anyway. And there's always some who believe any kind of tale, yeah. lie, rumor, or superstition that we circulate about black folks. Mm -hmm. So let's destroy his credibility first, and if that doesn't work, then let us slay the dream of himself. Mm -hmm. Cover what we've done by withholding evidence and telling more lies. And then we'll see what will become of his dream. Uh, perhaps there was one brother in the group who said, well, maybe we're getting too worked up about Joseph and his dream. You know, just because somebody dreamed something doesn't mean it has to come true. You know, after all, dreams can be fantasy. Oh, yeah. See, let's go ahead and dream. After all, when Father dies, we'll be in charge. We're still the elder brothers, and there is no way he can jump over all of us to become head of the family. <laughs> and there were those who regarded King's dreams as fantasy. Governor Ross Barnett of Mississippi, yep. Senator Richard Russell of Georgia, Senator Strong Thurman of South Carolina, Come on, Public Safety Director of Birmingham, Bull Hunt, uh -huh. and Sheriff Jim Clark of Selma, yeah, Alabama, well. Governor George Wallace, Wallace of Alabama, of yeah. Yeah. Had they been listening, I'm sure they would have told Cain that he was just fantasizing yeah. and out of his mind believed that such a dream could ever come to pass in America. He probably said, well, they've had the field day in Washington and they've had a good shout and a big picnic and can go home now believing that they've made some progress <coughs> and we can go back to doing business as usual in America. However, a few years later, when I saw a picture of George Wallace crowning the first black queen of the University of Alabama from the field chair, when just a few years before he had stood so boldly on his feet to defy the mandate from the high court of the land to block the entrance of the first two black students to that school, it let me know that God does have a way of making a wild dream become reality when they're given by and come from heaven. Yeah. A few years later, when I saw Strom Thurmond campaigning for black votes in South Carolina, <laughs> I was reminded that God still has you. a way of leveling <laughs> hills and exalted valleys. Yeah. A few years later, when I saw Jim Clark voted out of office by black voters, I was reminded that God can still bring down the mighty and exalt the lowly. A few years later, when this country observed the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., not J. Edgar Hoover, not Paul Connor, <laughs> come on now, come on. still the first class and the last first. Reuben said, let's not kill him. Let's defer him. And the other said, let's sell him into slavery and file him away. And that part of the memory bank is labeled deferred and forgotten. And then we'll see what will become of his dreams. And while some attack the dreamer in his dreams, while some dismiss them as fantasy, others simply file them away. 
They simply begged off the Negro question and, and deferred the dream. And they put it in the hands of the Committee of Benign Neglect and left it there. They told Black America that we are too involved with too many other issues of national importance. We've got a war to fight in Vietnam. We don't have time to be bothered with you. But what happens to a dream? Deferred. You know, the great black poet Langston Hughes once asked that question. Yeah. And a poem said, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Oh, that's not like a sower and then run. Does it sink like rotten meat? A crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet. Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? <laughs> you know, what, what does deferment do to the drink? And how does it affect the dream? See, dreams can turn into nightmares. And everybody knows about King's speech at the march on Washington, but not a whole lot of us have taken the time to read another writing of his, The Trumpet of Conscience, yeah. where King wrote, and I quote, I must confess to you today that not long after talking about that dream, it see, I started seeing it turn into a nightmare. I remember the first time that I saw that dream turn into a nightmare. Just a few weeks before, a few weeks after, I had talked about it. It was when four beautiful, unoffending Negro girls were murdered in Birmingham, Alabama in a church. I watched that dream turn into a nightmare as I moved through the ghettos of the nation and saw my black brothers and sisters perishing on a lonely island of poverty yeah. in the midst of a vast ocean of yeah. material prosperity yeah. and saw the nation doing nothing to grapple with the Negro's problem of poverty. Mm -hmm. I saw that dream turn into a nightmare as I watched my black brothers and sisters in the midst of anger and understandable outrage turned to riots to try to solve the problem. Did the system finally beat King? Did the attacks kill the dreamer? And did the deferment plan kill the dream? The no. answers to those questions are an emphatic no and a resounding no. King goes on to state 